This is a secret container. Today, it landed on my map in the world of Parasite. My main goal is to protect and crack it open, because these parasites will be doing everything to wreck it. And inside, brace yourself, because it's gonna blow your mind. Also, we're in for fresh spots, plot twists, and brand new monsters. We've got a whole hundred days for the entire craziness. But at the start, nothing hinted at trouble. In the morning, I was doing my things. Started building a garage for my jet-powered couch and wanted to tidy up my stash. New day, guys. Right now, I want to quickly sort out all my stuff and then head to the infected zone. There's a bunch of parasites there and kind of took over everything, probably. Wait, hold up. Are these coordinates a secret container dropped? Hurry before the parasites wreck it. Why are we wasting time? Let's go. Just check it out. There's so many parasites here. After dealing with these parasites, I started checking out the unidentified object. The container looked kind of strange and where it came from, I had no idea. Maybe it's from outer space. Look, there's some emblems here and even some beams sticking out of the body. One question, what do you even do with this? So wait, what about the other side? Something secret inside? Find a way to crack those doors open and shield it from the parasites. They'll do anything to destroy it. While it was a total mystery what this thing was and where it came from, I was still pretty curious to know what's inside. As I'm heading back home, I notice a few parasites swarming around this container. Hold on, what, what, where, wait, stop, 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 stop! They're not targeting me, I, I have to defend this somehow. Down the road, hordes of parasites will be swarming on this container, from the weakest to the strongest. We gotta figure out a way that we can protect it. Nonetheless, for starters, I decided to dig a trench around it and set up some barbed wire, which I found in the nearby ruin. Okay, that's better. Tomorrow, we'll figure out a way what to do with it. Day 29. Besides the container, more and more beacons started popping up around. These beacons unpop the parasite presence on the map, infect blocks, and spawn even tougher monsters. So I spent the morning clearing those near my house. Alright guys, okay, okay, but back off! Whoa, whoa, what is that? 1 HP! Ooh. All good, but they just keep coming. I had a lot of plans. Initially, before the container showed up, I wanted to check out an abandoned city fully infested with parasites. But now the top priority is to protect the container and later figure out how to open it. All right, check it out. I got this thing called a turret. I found it in a chest near the ruins. If we place it here like so, it can fend off some parasites. For now, I hope it's gonna be enough. I spent the whole day upgrading the container defense, dug another trench, filled it with lava, and added another layer of barbed wire on top. This is the most protected container you've ever seen. Day 30. The number of parasites has grown, but today I decided to head to that infected abandoned city. And of course, I'm gonna be on my couch. Whoa, look at that. I didn't expect it to be this huge. The city was on a swamp, swarming with parasites and beacons, far from level 1 and 2. Alright, so I parked near the entrance. Well, still gotta walk to it. Let's go check it out. And of course, the parasites wasted no time and started swarming me from everywhere. Guys, what is this? This is insane! One, two, two, one. Turns out it's three! Okay, jokes aside, guys. Look, here are these red blocks. What do you think they are? Infected blocks, of course. And this world can completely turn into these. And we're here to prevent that. Let's go! First thing I came across was a garage. There, I found some ammo, a screwdriver, and a piranha launcher. I'll tell you straight away, we won't need that. Oh wait, there's even more parasites here! In this city, there were three main beacon spawn points. All located more or less in one space. Here. Okay, check it out. There's some smoke coming from here and parasites running all around. Let's try going into the house to get higher and try to destroy the first beacon from here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, great. Whoa, that's a tough beacon. And you just spawned tons of parasites. Let's go down and see. All right, there's a chest and look, some kind of infected water. I don't know what it is. Whoa, check out the loot in the chest. New armor never hurts. I'm still running around in iron armor. Okay, two more beacons to go. Let's go. I couldn't clear the city in a whole day. First, the beacons regenerated and spawned even more parasites. Besides, they were even stronger than the first one. So I decided to come back here on the second day and drop off the resources that I found. New day, friends. I'm back here again. Guess what? The parasites are here too. Fight after fight, guys. The most important thing is that I have ammo and blocks, as well as barbed wire. After destroying the last two beacons, parasites essentially stopped spawning here, except for random spawns. So I cleared the city of parasites. After looting the city, in the evening, I decided to head back home. While sorting out all the resources, a new day dawned, and moreover in the city, I found an upgrade that I plan to install right away. As I understand guys, a wheel frame and big wheels. Let's give it a try. 
look at that. Whoa. All right. Now we can go through a desert. It's a jet powered off-roader now. It looks really cool now. After that, I decided to run and check out my container. Luckily, it wasn't far from my base. You know what, guys? The main question is what to do with it. Honestly, I feel like this is for the whole series. Somehow, we need to open it, but I don't even know how. Maybe craft some kind of key or something. Judging by the items here, which drop from parasites, barbed wire, and the turret did their job. Nevertheless, how do we even open it? Parasites will keep coming, and it was a huge problem for the container. I have a new idea, guys. We'll build a base around the container. At a distance, it would be hard to protect this container. Let's also consider that this is a very detailed model. I just feel that this container isn't some side quest, but directly relates to the storyline of our 100-day survival. First, I decided to build a fence, and this time, it was entirely cylindrical, with our container as the center. I placed barbed wire everywhere because now I'll be living here, and they couldn't think of anything better than making an underground base. Alright guys, we're digging our burrow. First, I dug out all the rooms, and for your convenience, I labeled each room where I plan to do something. The most important thing I wanted to achieve in this base is to have a lot of light coming in. For that, I had to make a lot of glass because our ceiling will be glass, providing a view of the stars. The next day, I worked on finishing the walls and the floor, and slowly began moving the main resources here. The previous base is crucial for us primarily because it has a runway for the couch, and it's not too far, so I think I'll leave the couch there with the runway. However, I can't say we're fully moving here yet. I think we'll live between the two bases, and for now, we'll deal with the container difficulties here. By day 35, my base was partially ready. It turned out pretty awesome. Well guys, here's how it all looks. We have a hole here, a beautiful bedroom, a storage room, kitchen, and of course, a home theater where we'll place a jet-powered couch in the future, if we get a new one, that is. Also, I decided to create a pathway for my first base to the second one for convenient movement. I even added lamps for illumination. Since I still didn't know how to open this container, I decided to explore the locations around, and there was plenty to explore. You never know where a certain road will lead you. Let's run here and see what's gonna happen. Look, some scorched ground and a barn. Oh, again, the parasites are coming at me. What are these spots? Uh, I don't know. Let's see what we have in the barn. All right, there's hay on the floor. Let's just collect it. And some pretty good resources, I'll tell you. New gun, ammo, we'll take that. Great. In the following days, I continued exploring my native bio. There were many ruins, different towers, buildings, and I even found a village. By the way, I spent a lot of time in the village during my childhood. Like the video if you did too. Oh, a beacon. How didn't I notice it? Let's uh, quickly destroy it. So so there's some note here. This village became infected three years ago when parasites first appeared in this world. Now it's abandoned but holds a secret. Perhaps someday you'll be able to decipher it. What kind of secrets are these? First secret containers, now a secret village? Where's the answers? I don't know. On day 38, the container finally did something. Guys, this is weird. Look, it's all covered with these acidic lines. I assure you, this wasn't there before. I'm not entirely stupid. Well, maybe sometimes, but no, it wasn't there. And again, I carefully examined this container from all sides and found no clues on how I could open it. What if there's a monster inside the container? After all, it seems like it's bound by chains. But maybe it will make some sounds then, right? I hope so. I remind you that I only have one life in this survival, and I won't have the opportunity to respawn. In fact, I'm building a base around something that could turn out to be really bad. So what if there's really a monster in there? It was a scary thought. But there were no signs that a monster would crawl out, so I just continued to observe it carefully. On day 39, I expanded my farm a bit, fought with parasites again, and sometimes defended the container from flying monsters. But day 40 was very, very interesting. Alright, there's a message in chat. Infection continues to spread. Perhaps the key to solving all the answers may be in the container, but it also needs a key, and you'll find it, but not now. What? How scripted is this game? Okay, at least I have some information. Information now. At that very moment, more beacons were appearing on the horizon of my biome, blocks were becoming heavily infected, and parasite dungeons were emerging. It only meant one thing. At this rate, the infection would easily reach my base. Look at that! Okay, we need to do something about this right now. First, let's try to destroy all the beacons. There's tons of parasites here. Come on, careful, careful! Look, there's a huge tower here. Frankly, I have no idea where we are and what this is. I'm a bit scared because I've never seen anything like this in our survival journey. Alright, I've destroyed all the beacons here, but I think this is going to linger forever in this area. Thus, I managed to halt the infection 
production at this specific location. However, if we don't find and notice such things, this location will eventually turn into a biome of parasites, where even clouds and the sun won't be visible. Day 41. Today, I decided to build four towers on my base and put up a turret on each one to protect my container even better. The last time I played with a parasite mod was when we did 100 days survival on the train. The focus there wasn't really on the parasites, and they were used completely differently. Now, with this mod, I think we're doing relatively fine, but looking at the infection of the map is getting a bit scary. So, we've got these four towers. Let's put the turrets on them. First one, another one, okay, there you go, and the last one, done. Day 42. It turned out to be quite an unexpected day, because finally, there was some information related to the container. A new message appeared in chat. The mystery has descended to Earth. Answers can be sought everywhere. But the question is, where will you find them? Perhaps the container itself will guide you on the path. Alright, this is getting interesting. The container will guide the way. I decided to thoroughly inspect the container, thinking if it can change. Maybe something new has appeared. And it did. Look, here it is! These are coordinates, guys! I have no idea what for, but we're grabbing our things and going there right now. We're on the road, guys! Let's go! After all, a sofa is the best transport I've ever used. I spent the whole day on the road to the coordinates. I also saw a road and various buildings around. I didn't miss the chance to loot and find something new, so I smoothly landed on the ground. We've arrived, guys. I can already see parasites, a tower, some ruins, and weird buildings. There's even some interesting doors here. Oh, wait, go back. What do we have here? A glitch diamond? What? Three items of some kind? I have no idea what each is for. Oh, look, great. We can attach this handle to our gun. The recoil was reduced. Nice. What's this? Oh, what? Is that a claw or something? A beast claw and a glitch diamond. I have no clue what to do with it, but it doesn't matter. Hey, come here. With these guns, it's much easier to deal with these parasites. So what do we have here? A gas? canister and some note. This village was created for people working at the port. Many goods came through our lands. We take pride in our port. Wait, if we practically reach the coordinates indicated on the container, maybe our destination is this very port, especially considering that it's a container. It seems like everything's aligning. Okay, let's loot everything here and carefully go further. There's no turning back. Why are you scaring me? Everything will be fine. We've killed so many monsters in our survival. I don't know what dangers might be there, but come on, we can handle it. Well, we've looted everything around, so let's fly further. We had to fly for a short time. In just three minutes, I saw the outlines of the port and decided to land carefully on the ground. Here we are, guys, the port itself. And as you can see, there's tons of parasites. Wait, careful, careful, careful. Okay, guys, we've arrived at the port. And as you can see, there's so many monsters here. The main question is how these regular containers are connected to my container, which is made with a model. Although, as you can see, these seem to be made with models as well. Okay, the best thing we have here is crates, whereas you understand there might be some loot. Our main task is to understand where a container led us here. To do that, of course, we loot crates and destroy monsters. So, here's a scope- Oh, wait, 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 get careful, careful! We need to be more careful, guys. Half HP! So, our ammo ran out, so I think we're gonna drag this here. And there we go, that's so much better. We continue to search for loot, but only find monsters. By the way, this scope might also add damage to the gun, I think. It's still unclear where the sea is. What? Just containers, some awnings, a golden apple, and some juice. I've gotten used to these monsters, guys, honestly. 3 HP, 3 HP, 3 HP. Survival doesn't seem as easy as before. This allows us to fight somehow. I found another gun, look. Oh, ch check it out, that's a beacon. Wait, it's going to spawn new monsters for us. Guys, it's going to spawn new monsters. Wait, wait, guys, 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 guys. We gotta be careful. Wait, don't jump here, because that's gonna be the end for me. Guys, the parasite broke the container and inside there's a chest. 15 diamonds? What? Okay, I understand. I understand. I understand, dude. I understand. The biggest problem was that I had a few bullets left and there was a beacon that needed to be destroyed because it was spawning parasites at this location. So there's a note here, okay. Not far from the port, from an unknown place, a strange container appeared. It doesn't inspire trust in us. We have no idea what could be inside it. It appeared so unexpectedly 
and it's scary. So I think it refers to the container I have at my base. There's tons of monsters, but absolutely no ammo. And look at that, you won't pass here, you're too tall for that. So I'll try to destroy this beacon with the five bullets that I have left. I couldn't destroy it with guns, but I managed to do it with a pickaxe. Wait, 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 careful, careful. Look, this is probably the fastest parasite I've seen. I think they didn't like that I broke their beacon. Only by night could I completely clear the port of parasites. Continuing to explore the location, I stumbled upon some text, and it was crucial for us. So what's this? In the port, there are containers that can be opened. To do that, you need to craft keys. They're made of iron. Here you can find answers to many questions. In this port, there were many containers, but in reality, only one type of container could be opened. These were containers with a yellow-black stripe at the bottom, and I was able to figure that out. Oh, so this container was one of them. I think the only containers that can be opened is with this stripe down here, and you need keys made of iron for that. Okay, tonight we'll loot everything here, and tomorrow we'll think about how to make these keys. Half of the next day, I was heading home. As you can imagine, the journey was quite long. In my recipe book, I found the craft recipe for the keys I needed. However, I was really surprised when I learned that they had to be crafted from iron blocks. The amount of iron I need is just insane. In the first few days, I tried to find a sufficient amount of iron in the mines. Time passed and the iron accumulation was slow. Considering how much we needed those keys, I realized that an iron farm was essential. Well, let's break it down. I can mine iron in the caves while my iron farm also makes iron. So we just have to build it. Creating the iron farm was not a particularly easy task. First, I had to build a platform for our iron golems to spawn. It's an iron fever, guys. Now let's construct the walls. By the end of the day, the so-called foundation of our farm was ready. Additionally, the entire platform needed to be filled with water, ensuring it flowed towards the center. Iron golems spawn when they think they're in a village. To achieve this, I placed many doors, cobblestone, and torches. On the second day of construction, guys, our farm is nearing completion. I think we'll continue tomorrow. On the second day, I had to create another level for our farm. It's the same, just one block shorter. The main ingredient for our farm was a villager, who we still had to find. For now, I prepared a space for him. Understanding how to build such a farm was quite challenging, but we're almost done. A few finishing touches and we'll be mining our gold. Gold! I mean iron! All that was left is to place a chest with hoppers to collect our iron and most importantly, find villagers. A new day guys! Before we go to those villagers, let's see what's happening on our farm and gather the harvest. Also, as you can see, there's some beacons now. This time I won't spend any ammo, we'll try to deal with everything using a pickaxe. Searching for a village took some time, and on the first day I found absolutely Absolutely nothing. But on the next day, thanks to my sofa, I could see something in the distance. And it was a village. Guys, a village! When was the last time you saw a regular Minecraft village in my survival videos? Great, villagers! So, let's take a boat and just take one of these villagers on the boat first. Oh, nice! Done! We'll leave the sofa here and we need to somehow get to the river and then we'll figure out how to sail. Honestly, getting there was harder than I thought. Parasites constantly attacked us and I had to protect the villager. Oh, guys, that was tough. Let's keep going. Next, I safely brought the villager to his room and repeated this process several more times. The villager is inside, guys. I really hope our farm will start working soon. And there you go, guys. The first golem spawned at night. Look, everything is working just fine. Okay, I think it'll take some time and we'll have a ton of iron. Amidst my busy work on resource gathering, I occasionally checked the container, but it didn't change at all, as if there was a pause and the container was waiting for some action from me. Guys, I really want to make this case opening in the port as soon as possible. I think we need at least 10 or 12 keys, and then we'll see how it goes. Considering the container I accidentally opened with the parasites, which by the way had 15 diamonds, I understood that other containers would likely have some awesome loot too. Honestly, I expected to get more iron from my farm. But besides that, I also went mining, and in the end, it was enough. Alright guys, we have the keys. Now let's grab the sofa, take more ammo this time just in case a parasite attacks, and let's go do our case opening. New day. It's good that I cleared the port from the infection before, otherwise Otherwise, it would be pretty difficult this time. Guys, I'm on site. Well, let's slowly start opening the containers. I really hope this will help us. Okay, the first one is open. It works. The doors are opening. And inside, there's a box like in that blue container. Okay, a note. We try to figure out if that mystical container had anything to do with the aliens. As it turned out, no. It's just graffiti. But nevertheless, you can constantly hear sounds from inside. Oh, what? Something is coming from the street. I can't talk anymore. I'll finish later. Oh, what? Wow, guys, I think there's something inside our container, and most likely, it's not really friendly. So, what do we have here? A car? Guys, I just want a car! 
Why? I I have my sofa. Well, I mean, the car isn't bad either. Oh, nice, a stack of iron. And as you understand, investments pay off sooner or later. Entrepreneur Zeman, keep that in mind. All right, some cool items. I'm just taking all of this. Here we go, so much decor. Chairs, lamps, refrigerators. This will definitely improve our base. Another note, opening this container is not easy. Most likely, it won't happen in our lifetime, but someone might have this opportunity. You need to head to the parasite infested territory, find a soul stone there, throw it at the entrance of the container and be ready for anything. Oh my god, well guys, what can I say? Now we know how to open it. Let's look for the infected zone, and for now, let's finish opening all the containers and get out of here as soon as possible. In the containers, I found a lot of useful loot. It was already late and I had only one key left. I opened the last container, gathered a ton of wood, and flew home. New day, parasites continue to evolve. If you remember how we started with the infected ones, now huge monsters no longer surprise anyone. But it's not just about monsters. Today, I started noticing how some blocks all over the map became infected. Look guys, this isn't funny anymore. Everything here could be taken over by these parasites. If you remember, in the first episode we lowered the infection level by crafting specific blocks from the drop of the parasites themselves. And I forgot about that. So let's make more of these blocks and try to reduce the infection level. Of course, it won't help me much. One block can remove 1% of the infection, and for this survival it's impossible to completely get rid of it. Nevertheless, our task here is to survive 100 days and for this task it might help us lowering the infection level a bit i felt relief and i even decided to get a dog want a bone great we tamed the dog i'll uh, i'll call you jack like the video for jack on that same day i decided to make him a small shelter so that the dog could live in comfort day 56 i spent today gathering wood and searching for coal since these resources were already running out on day 57 i set out to explore the ruins i hadn't had time to explore in my biome and overall i even found a couple of interesting an unusual one. Guys, today we found a ton of medkits. It's just great. Unfortunately, day 58 wasn't as relaxed as the previous ones. The infection showed up again. No! I spent so many resources to lower this infection, and here it is again. At that moment, I didn't know that there was already a whole biome of parasites where there's no sunlight, and it's nothing like the regular world. If you recall, in the first one of the notes I found in the container, it mentioned that to open our super cool secret container, we needed to find a soul stone. You can find the soul stone in these infected zones. And the next day, I remembered that. Look, I'm flying right at the border of the infected zone. At the beginning of survival, there was nothing there at all, and you know what? We need to find some item there that will help us open the container. Now, let's land our sofa and walk to this infected zone. I hope we don't get annihilated there. Finally make ourselves some diamond armor and enchant it. I just hope we can handle it. I don't even know what we need to look for, but if we don't try, we won't be able to open the container. So, let's go. Okay, guys, it's a bit scary here. Look, behind us is the regular world, and now we're in the infected zone. If you don't resist the parasites, the whole world world will become this biome. And as you understand, surviving in such conditions is basically impossible. First of all, look at the different plants here. Besides looking just creepy, it was hard to notice parasites behind these plants, and sometimes they attacked out of nowhere. Nevertheless, in this biome, there were various paths and ruins that appeared after the infection of this biome. The loot there justified the danger you face when entering this biome. What's more interesting, I came across some kind of highway. I walked in it until I encountered a huge fortress with very scary gates. Perhaps that's where the soul stone was. But to check that, I needed to get there. And there were just a ton of monsters. Look, lightning strikes, and there you can see some glowing red face. Okay, I don't even know what to expect from this location. I barely got through all this here. Look at those huge beacons. Look at how many beacons there are. Oh my god, it's really terrifying, guys. Look at the size of these parasites. I don't even know how many bullets I'll have to use. We need to- Oh my god, even the beacon has a boss bar. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm just taking him down. I think I dealt with everybody, guys. That was intense. All right, let's see what loot I can find here, and let's enter this castle or whatever it is. It's my first time seeing something like this for real. Marshmallows on a stick? Great. So the loot here is pretty standard. I don't see anything cool that I could really like. Just one marshmallow. Oh wait, soulstone? Guys, look, we found it. 
I think it's located at the end of each fortress, or I don't know how else to explain it. Today, I plan to open that container. Well, let's finally open that container for which we did so much. Inside could be anything, from a monster to a plane, a billion dollar bank card, or even a huge monster, or nothing at all. But nevertheless, we'll find out now. Oh, it opened, guys? Wait... What is this? Seriously, it took me this long to open this container and I see this? What are you? It's not even attacking me. Actually, this turned out to be a very important character with whom I could talk. I was sent here to help you deal with the parasites. There is only one place where you can stop the infection. It's the Valley of Bones. I'm giving you the coordinates. Hurry before it's too late. In the box, I left a lot of useful resources for you. And in those garages where you found the sofa, a new means of transport awaits you. Oh, what? It just disappeared. The resources inside the container turned out to be quite impressive. It was super armor and cool technological guns, which I hope will really help me deal with the parasites. But what was more interesting was the new means of transport, which I immediately wanted to check out. We opened the container in this episode, got cool guns, had a conversation with some character, and learned about a valley of bones. But most importantly, got a new means of transport, which we'll now go and check out. What new means of transport I found, you'll find in the next episode. Don't forget to watch my other videos and like this video. Good luck to everyone. Bye bye.